Hello and welcome to HenryTheJedi.com Of course my name is Henry the Jedi and welcome guys, it's been a long time since I last spoke to any of you guys or through the website or through our Facebook or our Twitter, our Twitter contact but I'm glad it's a new year and I'm definitely hoping to get more content to you guys Welcome guys and I hope you've enjoyed the holidays and yeah, as I said it's been quite a long while it's so nice to speak to you guys once again and today we're going to be like taking a look at a new tutorial in which we're going to involve an animation uh, based on uh, physical features. In other words, we are going to be used, we are going to be designing rather an animation which will rely on real world parameters to enable us to create an animation that we want using a relatively new feature for some of you and it's called NVIDIA's PhysX. Okay? It comes now bundled with 3D Max, I think from version 2013 or 2012 and above. And for some of you, it might show up as mass effect. Okay, but they both do the same thing. It comes as a replacement to 3D Max's reactor engine. Because Autodesk has realized, you know, that they needed to beef, to beef it up a bit and hence the collaboration with NVIDIA to make the, the physics engine much more robust. Okay. So, in other words, we are going to create an animation which will, which would have taken us as animators far too long to animate. Hence, we are going to throw everything at the physics engine. It will calculate everything for us and of course give us the animation that we want. Okay. So, as I said, it's nice again to speak to you guys and I definitely hope that this year to get more content out for you guys to enjoy. Thank you so much and thank you for your continued support in all these years. My name is Andrew the Jedi and yes, let's keep believing. Okay, so now we are going to reset our 3D Max scene by clicking on the 3D Max button and reset. Okay. That, of course, we have a clean play to work from. And so that whatever I change here, you guys can follow along and we'll get the same result. Okay. Now, we need to design our basic rock structure. Now, 3D Max, unfortunately, doesn't come up with, uh, doesn't come built in with rock primitives. So that means, of course, we are going to create our own. Okay. And here's how we're going to do it. We are going to create a sphere. Turn on auto grid and just draw a sphere out in the viewport like that. Okay. And let's go to the modify tab. And also we need to see the edges around the sphere. So up there where it says perspective, right next to it you'll see realistic or shaded. So please right click and turn on shaded. And right click again and turn on edge faces. That way of course you can see where the edges of the object are. And if your object's light is a bit too dark to see what you're doing, please double click on the color box over there and change it to a light color. Okay, maybe a light blue. Yeah, that way you can just see, of course, where the edges are. All right. Then, as you can see, we are on the modify tab. We are going to slice our sphere up because we don't need all of its segments. So, you see where it says the hemisphere. Please increase the value. You see what it's doing, huh? By increasing the value of the hemisphere, you, you can see, of course, it's crunching down uh, our sphere to give us this kind of a structure. Okay? You can either do that, and also, at the same time, you can also turn on slice. And by increasing the slice from value, aha, you can see, of course, what it's giving us. It's slicing through our sphere as if it was a piece of uh, fruit or food or cake you know that's what we want to do okay and please turn on base to pivot that way the object sits right on the floor okay so you can see of course what we've done we've sliced through and we've we've played with the hemisphere value and that so far of course has given us the structure okay now our object also needs some roughness around it so to create a rough fill without us actually mod modeling the rough patches around the object, 3D Max comes with a very nice modifier called Displace. So, with the object selected, we are going to add Displace modifier. 
Okay? Now, for those of you who, for whom it may be the first time to use the Displace Modifier, its purpose is basically to enable us to modify an object's look by applying textures without us actually modeling anything. In other words, of course, the best way to show it to you how, what I mean is to, to work on it, okay? Now, in the Displace Modifier, we need this object to be, to be driven by a map. Please click on the None button and we are going to look for cellular please click on cellular okay and then we are going to bring up the material editor by going to rendering material editor compact material editor okay now in here we are going to drag our cellular map onto any of these available slots and please make sure it's an instance that way if we change uh, the material, of course, it will update the displace modifier and hit OK. Alright. Now, what we are trying to tell 3D Max here basically is that the object's look will be modified by this material here. Okay. In this case, of course, it's a cellular material. And please, before I go, we go ahead, please go ahead and increase the number of, the, the, the amount of the strength here to a high number. And already, of course, you can tell what is going on. Basically, what the object is doing is all driven by this cellular material. And please turn on luminance center. That way, the modifier always acts from the center point. Okay. Now, if you, if we go ahead and change, for instance, the size, look what happens. Of course, you can see it updates live in the viewport modifying our object to become whatever it needs to become if we turn off the edge faces yeah you can better tell what's going on you see now because of this cellular map we are able to modify the object's look and feel without us actually sitting down and modeling any of these parts okay so that's the clever thing about this place modifier and the map that drives it and also, the other thing about the, the cellular map is that these colors here control the look of the object. For instance, under division colors, if you click on the, any of these colors here, let's say the second color, which is black. If you adjust it to become any other color, you can see, of course, the impact that it's having on our object in live timing. You understand that, eh? Like, right away, we can easily tell what it's doing to the object okay if you change that too of course it's definitely having an impact see what i mean huh? okay and by the way i think let's go to the sphere layer over there and i think let's see we want to slice it yeah let's slice it up to 180 degrees that's where ah sorry 180 yeah that way it's a, it's a straight line cut through it see that eh? perfect okay and i believe even the white color here there we go the white color also controls of course the look of the object all right so that's really one of the interesting thing about the displace modifier and so here's what we're going to do we're going to adjust the properties basically we're going to adjust the size of the cellular map by increasing it of course you can see what happens when you increase the value of the size it looks like it's wobbly and so forth we are simply increasing it just so that it gives us a look that looks rough enough okay that is all we are trying to seek okay and for me this value of 16.9 definitely does it for me okay really this you can you can decide on really off how much further you can take it but i'm definitely fine with this look okay because i've just adjusted the size to 16.9 and again if you change the value of the spread as well you see you get different results okay you see that eh? okay i'm just going to go back to 0 0.5 I i'm more than happy with that okay it's just as long as it looks like a piece of rock that's all okay and then of course don't forget you can always adjust the strength huh? mine is at 0 
if you increase the size of course you can end up with even more interesting structures even the decay value also gives of course different results okay i think i'm up with the value of zero right and remember all this has been achieved simply because of a map we didn't model any of this okay so we're going to rename this object of course to rock uh, underscore 001 okay and let's open up the material editor uh, and yeah just create a material there called rock we'll change it later on turn on two-sided two and assign it to the object and for now i just want it to be a noticeable color okay just for the sake of being noticed in the viewport okay then after we've done that let's just scale it a bit down okay after we've done that of course we need duplicates of this object so that we get we get uh, quite a few more rock pieces that we are going to use so with one of the rocks selected please add just the uvw map modifier okay we will work on it later on and just make it let's see i think spherical will work for it okay then we are going to go to tools we need to duplicate this object so we go not under tools we go to yeah let's go to tools and array okay what array allows us to do is duplicate quite a lot of objects uh in a line around the circle or by scale okay now, the type of objects we want are copies, not instances of each other. So please select copy. And as you can see, there will be 10 of them that will come out of this. And let's turn on move because we want to duplicate them along an axis. And most important is to turn on the preview button. That way, of course, you'll be able to see live what we're doing. And then please increase the move decrease or increase the move uh, value on the x-axis as you can see of course yeah it's duplicating 10 more of the same rocks along the x-axis now if your axis is not the x-axis well you can always right click to turn this to zero and then maybe you can duplicate it duplicate the objects around the y-axis you know or if the y-axis doesn't work for you of course you can duplicate them along the z-axis okay but i think in my case yeah it looks at like the y-axis is working for me and then yeah we hit okay now you can see of course now there are 10 rock pieces on our floor all came of course from that one original parent okay so these are of course all its children all right and then of course it's our task to come to each of these individual ones and modify their looks quite a bit so that they don't all look the same okay you can see i've selected that one rock but as much as i try to zoom in i'm not really able to to zoom in much more than this okay there's two ways you can fight it you can either hold shift shift and the zoom button you can see of course it allows you to go further and deeper than ever before that's if you're holding shift if you hold control while zooming you can see of course it's way even faster so it, it's either shift on the keyboard or control and zoom okay or even better there is this button here that says zoom extend selected if you click that you see it throws you right uh, in the center and in focus of whatever object it is that you had selected okay if you zoom out and let's say you want to go to this object here you see it's far away it takes a long time to zoom to it so well you can just click on it and then zoom extend selected and just like that 3d max throws you right at the place where you need to be in front of the object okay so that's the purpose of that little button there so click on that and there we are okay we're going to zoom out a bit and then go to the display layer and then we're going to change some values of course such as the strength you know and something just like that will be enough to give you a different look on the object you can even go to the sphere level and maybe play around with the slicing some more like that you see now of course this gives you an even smaller rock you understand the idea is we just want things to look random okay 
even this one here maybe you want to drop the hemisphere bigger or smaller i mean look at that eh? just like that of course that is a different rock structure see that eh? you can even slice on both sides and by doing that alone of course you will get different results okay this one here maybe maybe we can go to its displace layer and bring up the cellular map that it has there to an empty slot let's rename this to map uh, 4 okay so that it's unique and then yeah over here you can change the size yeah you can play with the size let me see i can see it's not updating so you can see i'm trying to change values but nothing is happening so we have to drag back the map to the slot there and make it an instance just like that of course now you can see it updates nicely okay so yeah that's those are the kind of things sometimes one needs to do to get the results that we want all right so yeah okay so yeah you can continue and do the same for most of these you can go to the displaced layer bring up bring it up over there rename it to map 5 maybe drag it back there make an instance you know so let's move on yeah let's adjust its properties here there's a spread value which you can play with you know like there's so much one can do yeah okay all right and maybe we don't even need the extras maybe we don't need these extras so i'm just going to go ahead and delete them and maybe some of these either can be scaled much smaller and play around with the slicings and so forth okay and then yeah you can make it squashed instead of uh, what it was before and yeah see what may suit you all right so yeah after having done that you will realize of course we have we we will end up with quite a few um uh different looking rock pieces and then once we've done that we're going to bring these all next to each other just so that they sit somewhere very close to each other because when they will be kicked out of the ground they'll all be kicked out at the same time so they need to be you know grouped somewhere waiting for action all right so you can see of course yeah the rock collection we have there and please also just rotate and twist them a bit around that way we just have some random look in our scene okay because we don't want all of them to fall at this in the same way you know doing the same things okay i think this piece is a bit just too big for our liking so we're going to reduce it okay so yeah you can see of course how i have positioned mine maybe you you have maybe you have more pieces than i have but it's fine because in the end we'll have more or less the same results okay and then uh maybe there's too few rock pieces for you maybe you we want more so let's go to edit and select all so that it selects all the rock pieces and then we go to uh edit or rather tools array once again click on preview see of course how many more have been produced maybe this time instead of moving them please reduce this value here to zero maybe this time try to rotate them and see what happens we don't want 10 of them we only want a few maybe two you see that eh? so as you can see we are rotating them 
in that axis and that axis and of course that axis as well the idea is just to give us more uh, pieces to work with try to make it three and select try and moving try to move them also a bit further apart from each other although we don't really need to worry about uh, moving them much because it should be taken care of by the by the physics system phys x system i mean okay you can see you can even toy around with the scales okay but let me just set it back to what it was okay and then click ok all right so yeah now you can see of course the collection of rock pieces that we have that are waiting that will be used if you want more even more rock pieces than this of course you go to edit select all again and tools array once again and click on preview again okay so yeah this really depends on you guys maybe sometimes you want to turn these values here back to zeros and then you just want uh two more yeah and you click ok so yeah this definitely of course gives us even more pieces to work with now if you go to edit select all as you can see right now i'm having 36 pieces so that's definitely more than enough uh, that we'll need for this animation okay now we're also going to create a few um a few boxes that will look like rocks just create a box okay and then we go to the modify tab uh, please turn on edge faces just add a few more segments like i'm doing there okay please right click and make them editable polys all right and then with the box selected please also rename it to a rock let me just see which was the last rock uh, that we created okay when we see from the list here the last rock is called rock 40 so please try and rename this to something else maybe let's see let's highlight its name and copy let's highlight the name of one of the rocks there paste there and we're going to rename it of course to rock 41 and then because it's a polygon of course that means we can then reshape this object to look more a bit you know more um, irregular okay so this will work like chunks or debris pieces okay there's no particular order in which i'm doing this i'm just trying to create some randomness you know with the look of our rocks okay for instance i've decided that will be one of the pieces and if i create another box there this one we we don't want uh, any sorry we don't want any length segments or width segments or height segments so let's go to edit and clone make a copy and just move this rock next to the other one okay make this a polygon rename this to rock 42 and of course just change its looks so that it just looks a bit irregular okay like this will form part of the chunks or debris as you may call them okay so this of course will be rock 43 and make it a polygon and adjust this adjust it as you see fit yeah you see that eh all right and then i'm going to make another one we're just trying to create randomness that's why we're adding this extra uh pieces this is definitely rock 44 and it will look like this and let's see and it will be rather flat
like that okay and of course please select these rocks as well and let's see yeah select these rocks and of course add uvw map to them make it a box okay yeah and then yeah we're going to give them of course the same material as the other rock pieces okay and please of course move them to be where the other rock pieces are waiting okay they should all be waiting more or less in the same pack like that because the job of, of dividing them will be taken over by Fizz X, of course, okay? And now, we are going to build the pillars that will drive our animations, okay? So, let's go to the Create panel. And, of course, there will be boxes. Now, uh, we are going to adjust its properties in the following way. It needs to be quite tall, so please increase its height. Yeah. Again, this depends on you. I mean, you are the artist, so you decide on how tall you want this to be. But obviously, the taller the object is, the further away uh, the distance will be so that the rocks will fall, you know, with more impact on the ground. So the taller this object is, the, 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 the harder, of course, the objects will fall. If it's too short like this, I mean, trust me, there's not much impact these rocks will have on the ground, okay? Because remember, this will be the object to kick them out of the ground okay so that's our box let's rename this to pillar pillar 01 okay and again add the uvw map modify to it so that of course we can apply materials to it and it's definitely a box and let's create a material for it call it pillar and assign it to the object and uh, you may want a this depends on you. I've just chosen a blue color because it just suits me more. Okay. So that's the pillar. And then we are now going to decide on its initial position. So maybe from the front view, let's see where we want this to be. From the front, actually, we are going to rotate it. Please rotate it uh, with the angle snap toggle option turned on. That way, of course, we can rotate like that. And rotate it, of course, at precise measurements. And let's try and see things from the right perspective. I think, yeah, okay. So just rotate your scene until it sort of matches the front view, okay? Because this is, of course, our front view. Because if we move on the left, you see, of course, it's definitely matching the front view. You can tell, of course, from there exactly where we are. Okay. Please select all the rocks in the scene. Now is the time to move them all like that. And please move them below, below, the, below the black grid line which represents the x-axis so that it will be sitting below ground. Okay? Because remember, people shouldn't see our rocks before uh, the, the rock blast takes place, okay? And then please select the pillar itself and move it down. And definitely this pillar needs to be quite bigger so that by the time it's blasted out of the ground, it kicks around every rock that is in its vicinity. So to do that, we can scale the rock like that and that, okay? And move it like that that so that of course as we said it's going to take on all the rock pieces that are there all right and then uh let's just scale it to be taller again and please move it again like that all right perfect and then of course we need to have a ground plane so we're going to create a plane like that okay Please rename this to ground. Open up the material editor. Of course, select any empty material slot and call it ground. And of course, assign it to our object. We'll leave it to be a white color. Okay, for now. All right. And again, assign a UVW map to it. All right. So now, of course, you can see the ground is covering up everything else that's below. So in other words, here, here is how things look from the top 
and that is of course how things look from below ground okay that's exactly what we want all right now is our job to position the pillars to the position in which they need to be before they strike off so we're going to select the pillar rotate as you can see the angle snap toggle option is still turned on and please rotate it to point whichever direction you want this pillar to strike at for instance if you want it to be tilted like that please rotate like that and then of course move it in position so that it will kick the object nicely so by doing that of course of course please observe also that it's still aligned properly so you can see of course from this point of view how things are looking all right and then please select the floor in fact let's do this we're going to render a test but to do that let's first change the render engine to mental ray so go to rendering render setup and then if you're already on mental ray it's fine but if you're on scan line or v-ray please scroll down until you see the assign renderer button where it says production please make sure it is mental ray okay all right okay then also yeah after you've done that you can just do a quick test by clicking on the very last teapot there in your 3d max interface called render production or you can still press f9 on the keyboard and then it's going to render for us a quick test all right so when we render of course this is what we get okay now what we want is for our floor to be infinite in other words we want this floor to go on forever okay to do that with the ground plane selected just go to the plane layer now you see where it says render multipliers there's a scale if you change the scale here to let's say 30 and you render again you'll see now what happens you see now the plane is so vast it occupies almost the entire scene and that is all achieved by changing the render multiplier to 30 on the scale that means at render time this object will be scaled 30 times over if 30 is too small for you of course you can always make the size even bigger all right and then the next trick is we're going to go to rendering renders uh, environment we are going to change the background color to be the same as our floor which is a white color okay and then just bring back the material data again for the ground you can see it's white there just change it to white as well complete white render okay i know it's not looking right but we're going to change things okay but for now just bear in mind the background is white and the floor is very big okay let me change my render settings here such as the size you do that by going to rendering render setup i'm going just to change the size here to hdtv 128 by 720 and i'm going to hit render now yeah so you see of course how it's looking all right okay 